Hello and welcome to the weekly newscast by First Ukraine. We are ready to present last news of our outgoing week for our viewers. My name is Victoria Zabian. Thank you for joining us. This week, the anniversary of Minsk agreements is coming. For now, Russian Federation did not execute non points of Minsk report, memorandum and package of implementation of these agreements. Illegal armed groups are continuing to shell fire positions of Ukrainian army. What are the results two years later after the signing of Minsk agreements? Watching the following story. On the 11th of February 2015, Vladimir Putin, Angela Merkel, François Hollande and Petro Poroshenko had started hard negotiations which were continuing for 16 hours. As a result, the declaration about ceasefire and withdrawing of heavy armaments since 15th of February 2015 was adopted. That time, cruel battles for the Balsava base were continuing. Despite of the Minsk agreements, separatists hurried up to take over strategic point with the help of Russian troops. One year has passed. Under the pressure of international sanctions, Russia stopped the invasion, but peace is still far away. This is the Pisky settlement not far from Donetsk. Before the war, a lot of countryside houses were here where locals had rest. During the battles, majority of houses had become ruined. And today, shell fires don't stop. Ukrainian soldiers had established first aid post at the basement. Wounded people were sued up here. Shell shocked people got the help. The most difficult is when you cannot help them. Local citizen sent his wife and children to safety zone, but he stayed despite of the danger. In the summer the tank has damaged my tree. The shell of grenade launcher ruined the roof. Water had drawn upon through the hole. It is good that soldiers are here. They have munitions. I hope that I will not need them. It is obvious that separatists who keep positions near Bakhmutka highway are tired from the situation without war and without peace. Soldiers of so-called Ghost Brigade had come to Donbass in order to build new communistic state, but still their plans are not implemented. I don't understand how is it possible to build two independent states from two stops of not the biggest regions. DPR and LNR. We are fighting for the Nova Russia. For us it is the prototype of big future Russia. The biggest help is given by Communist Party of Russian Federation. Russian help for separatists is not stopped despite of the pressure of international sanctions. This week Security Service of Ukraine has detained Russian officers of Common Center for Control and Coordination of Ceasefire Issues on the Russian border. They had Russian military books about blasting works, tactics, artillery and medal of separatist republics for military advances. Yes, I am a military man. I have military information in my computer. I read a lecture there. Why do you get the medal? It is for cooperation. It is written in the order for repulse the act of aggression by Ukraine. So, in fact, Russian officers who had to resolve ceasefire issues learned terrorists. Active trainings are provided in Rostov region on Russian territory not far from the borders with Ukraine. In particular, on 8th of February, Russian troops of South District were on alert. Simultaneously, the same training were started by separatists, so military reconcilement of terrorists and Russian troops is provided. In one year after signing of Minsk agreements, peace didn't come. Despite of the fact that battles are happening without heavy armament, situation stays stressful. Shellfires in the ATU zone happen practically every day on 8th of February. Terrorists shellfire the checkpoint in Marienka with automatic grenade launcher. On the video from security cameras, we can see how Ukrainian border guarders are hurrying up to withdraw civilian car from the shellfire. And already next day, near this checkpoint, the bus has exploded on the mine. Four civilians died.
Terrorists from pro-Russian illegal groups are continuing to violate ceasefire in Donbass. For the previous day, they opened fire on positions of Ukrainian soldiers 50 times. The most stressful situation stays near Donetsk and Horlivka. Enemy conducted fire with grenade launchers and machine guns on Piski, Avdiivka settlements and Butivka mine. Today we have a guest in our studio, Andre Hertel, Associate Professor for German and European Studies. Nice to meet you here in our studio. Thank you for having me. And first, uh, first uh, question will concern the painful and very important topic for Ukrainian society and international community somehow, I think. It's a uh, uh, Minsk process. Well, after two years, we have now seen any results. And uh, can it be a productive father on your point of view? Mm. Well, um, of course I can uh, understand that especially from the Ukrainian side, um, people, also the government, are not satisfied with the results yet of the Minsk process. Um, uh, on the other side, uh, we also have to see it's not true that, um, that it is not true that we have no results whatsoever. Um, the first kind of big advantage or the, the first positive result of the Minsk process is that major fighting has so far stopped. Uh, we have uh, some shelling, some minor uh, uh, incidents, uh, but major fighting um, has stopped. Uh, and uh, the Minsk process is basically for this kind of ceasefire, uh, it is uh, the ensuring format. Um, second, uh, what we have to say is uh, that the Minsk uh, process, that the Minsk agreements, that they provide uh, the basis for the sanctions regime of the West against Russia. So without Minsk, there would be no sanctions regime. And um, uh, essentially, um, uh, the, the fact that we can see that Russia has not delivered uh, upon, um, uh, upon it, it, uh, what it has to uh, deliver on in the Minsk format, it ensures that the West can go on with sanctions. So, but for the, rest, yeah. for the last time we can hear that the West is going to uh, cancel the sanctions against Russia. Uh, is it possible in the nearest future? Well, of course it is possible under circumstances, but uh, I would say we, we should not uh, get too much into rumors, we should stay with facts. And the facts we have is that the sanctions regime was prolonged and that Angela Merkel uh, um, a week ago uh, told uh, uh, the president, uh, the Ukrainian president Poroshenko, that she will ever, uh, do everything uh, to have the sanctions prolonged if the Russians do not deliver on their points. So I guess um, uh, the, the point of view from major foreign policymakers is quite clear. The rest, what we hear, uh, is uh, rumors. Um, I, 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 do not, I just do not want to go into and uh, comment. And also, there are a lot of talks about change of format because it seemed un unproductive for Ukrainian authority, mm -hmm. for Ukrainian society. And our Ukrainian authority suggested Geneva Plus format to resolve uh, at once the uh, uh, problem of, on the east of Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, the war, and uh, together with it, uh, Crimean annexation. Mm -hmm. Well, is it possible to provide such kind of dialogue with the Russian Federation? Yeah. Well, first of all, I have to say, I, I still think that uh, uh, Minsk works uh, in some uh, basic um, directions. It provides the basis for a ceasefire, it provides uh, the basis for uh, a sanctions regime uh, against the Russians if they do not deliver. That is already something. Uh, if we uh, talk about a change of uh, the format, um, we have to see what, what, what is possible uh, to achieve with that. Uh, um, uh, I think uh, the reason why uh, we are kind of stuck with the process in the Donbass or even, in, uh, even more so in, on, uh, on Crimea is not the format of those talks. It is the general uh, uh, position uh, of Moscow which does not see uh, itself, it does not acknowledge of itself as a party in the conflict, as a part of the conflict. Um, uh, and uh, it, that is the major problem. Does that change? Would that change with a new format? So would the Russians enter Geneva Plus by saying or admitting we are a direct part um, of this conflict? Um, I do not think so. Uh, so the change of format uh, will not change the position of Russian Federation? Of course, it will not change it. Yeah. I see. One more important topic uh, that is discussed in Ukraine and uh, in international context it's also yeah. important. It's a uh, resignation of Ivaro Sabramovich and we have a short video and material concerning yeah. this topic, so let's watch it. 
Member of Ukrainian Parliament from Petro Poroshenko Bloc, Igor Kononenko, had blocked the work of Ministry of Economic Development, Implementation and Reforms and wanted to take control over the money streams at the state enterprises. Such statement was made by head of Ministry Ivar Sabramovich just previous week. Now National Anti-Corruption Bureau had started the investigation. On 8th of February, Minister visited first interrogation in Anti-Corruption Bureau. Mr. Abramovich furnished proofs to detectives, in particular the screenshot of his mailing with director of Naftogaz company Andrei Pasichnik. According to Mr. Abramovich, Mr. Pasichnik was imposed on position of minister's deputy. Security of Mr. Pasichnik have brought the package of documents on Monday's evening. That is never done so. For 20 years of my work, I have never got any documents for potential deputies who were never asked to be my deputies. I know Andrei Pasichnik only as a representative of oil trading committees of Ukornafta. I know nothing about him. How can I say that he was a candidate for this position? Representatives of the National Anti-Corruption Bureau mentioned that Mr. Kononenko will be called for interrogation after Mr. Abramovich's witnesses in this case. It is to be recalled that together with Ivar Abramovich, his deputies are also handed to in resignation. Trade representative of Ukraine, Natalia Mikolska, is also among them. She named the reasons for her actions. The system is not working efficiently because there is no uh, clear understanding by all uh, division of power by the parliament president and the cabinet of ministers there is no respect to the division of powers and uh, no clear understanding that the economic policy and economy is the, in the competence of the government of ukraine rather than the parliament the president or some mix the cabinet of ministers should work more on strategic issues rather than on the day, daily issues those issues could be handled by the separate ministries. The third reason is that foreign partners that are trading with Ukrainian companies and foreign investors that potentially could come to Ukraine, we need to rebuild the trust of those people in Ukraine, in Ukrainian economy and in Ukrainian business. And all this could not be done without fast, actually, movement of the reforms. Well, such an interesting situation. Ukrainian authority itself invited the foreign managers to implement reforms. And now these managers are disappointed with the situation, common situation in Ukraine and with corruption, uh, you know, cases. And can it uh, undermine the image of Ukraine for international partners? Well, I would say it has already undermined the image of Ukraine a lot. Um, and uh, if, you, uh, if you see that Ukraine uh, depends a lot on uh, foreign creditors, on uh, the International Monetary Fund, uh, uh, on credit lines by governments, um, this is of course a shocking situation because who uh, right now wants under these circumstances give any money uh, to Ukraine, right? Um, I think um, uh, Abramovitsius stepping down was a very bold move. Um, uh, we now read uh, in, in many interviews uh, or in many analyses that what he wanted to do was to, to give a wake-up call uh, to the, the political system and uh, to the elites. Um, but uh, this is a huge gamble also. Um, in many ways things could also stay the way they are. Uh, and Ukraine just lost a very good minister, a very professional minister. I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Abramovitsius, together with uh, Ms. Uh, Yaresko, was the face of reform in uh, Ukraine. Uh, and I just hope that his gamble uh, to wake up society, to wake up the political establishment, that it will work. Well, uh, theoretically, uh, uh, is this situation with invitation of foreign managers mm -hmm. can uh, change, uh, really change the situation in such country as Ukraine? Yeah. Well, well, do you know some practice yeah. and cases of, um, you know, st uh, success stories? Yeah. for such countries? Um, of course, I mean, there are uh, success stories. Uh, I remember that uh, the Jinjic government uh, in Serbia uh, in the beginning of the 2000s after Milosevic rule, uh, it had some success uh, with, with technocrats and uh, of course, um, it's quite an easy logic. Um, you have people um, in major positions who do not have to fear anything politically, right? Um, they can just spend uh, a lot of time, a lot of energy without thinking about the next elections. Uh, in, in the very country um, they are basically uh, not uh, a citizen of and they would not basically have a chance 
um, also um, uh, to be uh, elected under normal circumstances. On the other hand, and this is what we also see in Ukraine, and it's underlying this case of Abramovichus and his stepping down, is uh, what those technocrats, uh, of course, lack um, is political power. They always depend on someone else. They depend on the prime minister. They depend uh, on uh, the president. And if those people, um, if those major uh, political players are not able um, uh, to kind of continuously support them in their everyday work, um, uh, of course, they, from a certain point on, those technocrats will not get done anything. And this Any is a point, I guess, uh, Mr. Abramovich yeah. has reached. Um, uh, he is very frustrated with how the political system, the regime, still works. Uh, there are a lot of leftovers from the past, uh, obviously. But um, just to step down right now and uh, to think that this wake-up call um, will kind of uh, really kind of brush up the political system, it would lead to major changes also. Uh, it might also be a little bit naive in the end. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, thank you very much for your point of view, for a very clear yeah. explanation, for interesting yeah. discussion. Okay. It was nice to meet you here. Yeah. Uh, Same. And our guest uh, in the studio was Andrea Hertel, Associate Professor for German and European Studies at the National University of Kiev Mohila Academy. This week, military representatives of Latvia and Ukrainian volunteers organized humanitarian aid for civilians and soldiers who are in the ATU zone. More details about what kind of aid it was, watch in the following story. Eight tons of humanitarian aid were passed from Latvia to Ukraine. At this time, packages with warm clothes for ATO participants and their families. Representatives of armed forces of Latvia were helping Ukrainian volunteers to unload the collected goods from several European countries. The transfer of supplies visited the ambassador of Latvia to Ukraine, Yuris Poikans. Mainly, it is a closing for ATO participants and their families. All in one, eight tons of, I hope, very important materials for Ukraine. Latvia is not the first time sends humanitarian supplies to Ukraine. According to military attaché of Latvian armed forces, such support to neighbors is present at all levels of his homeland. As for me, the need to support was perceived explicitly at all levels, from personal, governmental to all national in total, because our countries both have something in common, something that we have passed through, and that we both do not want to allow it to happen again. The host party were representatives of NGO, All Ukrainian Patriotic Movement Defense. When the state cannot provide with all necessities those who suffered from the war, says NGO chairman Denis Panasyuk, volunteers from the defense resort to international cooperation in order to collect the necessary things and try to distribute them as required. Earlier, the assistance came from France. Also, our Ukrainian diaspora in Chicago. We are very grateful to them, too. They passed a lot. Well, we did not make a division to the armed forces or to volunteer battalions, as it was before, because the war is the same for everyone. That is why for help comes anyone in need, as wives or veterans who are currently without job or money, and we, as possibly as we can, provide them with those assistance that we've got. The importance of such humanitarian assistance have also mentioned the chairman of the Association of ATO Veterans of the Navy and Marine Special Forces, Major Viktor Dekhterov. He recalls when he got wounded, medics had to cut the uniform from his body, and there were not even an underwear or other clothes to get dressed. So the prosperity of ATO participants and their families is a key element for successful adaptation to normal life. Well, you know, the successful psychological rehabilitation of fighters would become when they have bread, salad, clothing, money to go for movies with kids, to pay for school and kindergartens. Only then everything will be back in its place. But only by saying that everything going to be all right, saying to calm down, the sane mind will never be back. Therefore, those people who came through this ATO zone need an assistance not only in words, but in financing too. Viktor Dekhterov says that apart from the material assistance, his association plans to conduct joint activities of sharing personal experience among veterans of special forces of different countries, similar to those in America after Vietnam War or in other countries. National Anti-Corruption Bureau has its own special operation soldiers now. 30 soldiers swore on oath on 8th of February. According to head of Bureau, Tem Sitnik, the troop is already working. 
It has already detained four judges, in particular in the ATO zone. The main task of special operations soldiers is to secure participants of investigations and representatives of National Anti-Corruption Bureau. In common, 96 people will allot Department of Special Operations. For now, this department is completed on a half. We already had detentions in NATO zone, and I don't exclude that next arrest will be there. And I would like to provide this arrest absolutely autonomously, without relying neither on security service of Ukraine nor on armed forces. If we see that there are some crimes which are irresponsible of National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine, we activate subunit for special operations and our armed vehicles and we use these equipments and detain suspected persons. Artem Sitnik reported that MPs abused their right to appeal to anti-corruption bureau. It was said during the meeting of detectives with President of Ukraine Petro Poroshenko. Every day MPs had more than 20 appeals. Mr. Sitnik underlined that they use appeals for political fight. And he suggested to prepare chances to law in order to make MPs to be responsible for their appeals. Petro Poroshenko agreed. We have MP who registered more than 300 appeals since the time of Anti-Corruption Bureau was created. At the same time, this MP refuses to come and to witness on his own 295 appeals. Investigation on case of ex-president of Ukraine Viktor Yanukovych is practically over. It was reported by Prosecutor General of Ukraine Viktor Shokin. According to him, investigation has defined the involvement of Yanukovych to organization of killings on Maidan. Moreover, cases of this Berkut unit soldiers involved to shooting of Euromaidan activists were passed to the court. It was reported by head of Special Investigations Department of Prosecutors General Office Serhii Horbatuk. Three soldiers were detained a year ago in March. They are incriminated in 48 homicides. Their actions are classified as terroristic acts. Let me recall that 25 ex berkut unit soldiers are suspected in Euromaidan activist shootings. 20 of them are wanted. Cases of two are heard in Kyiv. Besides the direct crime committers, six high officials of law enforcement and Kyiv police were served with charges. As it is defined by investigation, by the criminal order, the shooting on 20th of January at the Institutska Street were committed. These people also are wanted. Investigator on case of Nadia Savchenko, Dmitro Manshin, was interrogated as witness. Advocates of the accused call him as the main faker of the case. The sitting took place on Monday on 8th of February. Then Mr. Manshin confessed that he prepared the accusation which was adopted by Russian General Prosecutor's Office. So he took the responsibility for statement that was there. Defender Ilya Novikov reports. He said that this is the fail for investigation. Moreover, the other advocate Mark Fagan published the records of conversation with Mr. Manchin's father, who complains his colleague that his son is under the pressure. Even taking into account all evidences of Savchenko's innocence, she will get the guilty verdicts because the court is political, ground of defenders' guess. But at the same time, they suppose that Nadia Savchenko could be released in spring. The decision is made not by court, but by customer of this court. It is Kremlin. Savchenko can get under 25 years of imprisonment. There is a convention about extradition of the penitentiary at the place of citizenship as Ukraine, so Russia take part in this convention. Savchenko has a big chance that according to this convention she will be sent to Ukraine for serving the sentence. But in fact, it will be an exchange, although such a word is not used. Exchange of Savchenko on soldiers Eurofeyev and Alexandrov, who were prosecuted in Ukraine and who likely will be convicted. If Savchenko goes home, it will influence destiny of the rest 10 political prisoners who are prosecuted in Russia. Our going week was very full of important events for international community. More about them watching the following video.
North Korea has launched the long-range rocket violating UN resolution. Earlier, Pyongyang reported that they were planning to launch enough space launch vehicle with Earth space satellite. But neighbor countries guess that in this way North Korea wants to mask the checkout of technologies needed for a creation of a long-range rocket. Minister of Defense of Japan Gen Nakatani commanded to shut down every rocket that is launched from the territory of North Korea and threatens Japan. UN Security Council and line of state separately commanded launching of long-range rocket and actions of North Korea. UN Security Council stated that as an answer to this action, new resolution about sanctions will be adopted. The members of the Security Council strongly condemn this launch. As a Korean, um, as a Korean, uh, it, is, uh, it is sad, almost pathetic, to watch the staged, the staged celebrations on the streets of Pyongyang. The efforts to achieve denuclearization through dialogue so far have only resulted in allowing North Korea to buy time to advance its nuclear capabilities. It has become clear by now that the current level of sanctions cannot put a break on North Korea's nuclear weapons development. The accelerated development of North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile program poses a serious threat to international peace and security. We're looking forward to expeditiously consulting with our colleagues in the coming days, and we will be looking to all council members to unite around a swift and aggressive response. Also, head of American intelligence James Clappert reported that North Korea has enlarged the uranium enrichment plant and has reset plutonium reactor, which can begin creation of material for a nuclear weapon during several weeks or months. Because of the unexpected military trainings of Russian Federation and its redrawing of European map, NATO has increased its reaction forces on the east of Europe three times. It was reported by Security General of NATO Jens Stoltenberg during his briefing in Brussels. He underlined that aggressive actions of Russia make NATO to react in appropriate way and to increase Good its afternoon. presence in Baltic, East here, Europe Mr. and in the Black Sea Basin. For now, quantity of NATO's forces is 40,000 soldiers. Mr. Stoltenberg added that eight headquarters are created for integration and coordination of NATO forces. I expect ministers uh, to agree to enhance our forward presence in the east and part of our alliance. This will bolster our collective uh, defense and at the same time send a powerful signal to deter any aggression or intimidation. We have already strengthened uh, our military presence in uh, the region, and we are setting up uh, eight small headquarters to support planning exercises and reinforcements. Primaries in USA has given the first result for political forces to choose their candidates for presidential elections. According to results in New Hampshire, Democrat Bernie Sanders and Republican Donald Trump have got the first places. Mr. Sanders is 20 percent clear for his main contender Hillary Clinton. Among Republicans, Donald Trump is 18 clear to John Kasich. New Hampshire primaries have begun the second in line of similar events in 50 states. In summer, Democrats and Republicans will announce their candidates for presidential position officially. Presidential election will happen on 8th of November 2016. On 8th of February, all people over the world celebrate Chinese New Year. According to Chinese calendar, Fire Monkey is a symbol of this year. The greatest celebration happened in China and Chinatowns over the world. Traditional dragon dancing took place on streets and people were squibbing near their houses in order to wait off bad fairies and to attract good luck. The culmination of the holiday were fireworks. This day, Chinese pray, leave coins for luck and take pictures of monkey. 
Ukrainian children first to take part in groundbreaking NASA art project. This is the first artwork from Ukraine which will be on satellite when the project launches. That makes of these children pioneers of the galaxy. Children with the artist David Datuna wrote the world's first picture for the art of the satellite. Olena Tsarenka seen the masterpiece of the flag of Ukraine. These children want to see the future, the future of Ukraine, colors, flowers, heart. Applause and happy smiles to dozen children with the artist David Atuna wrote the world's first picture for the art of the satellite. The main idea of the project says the artist to enable every person on Earth to touch the cosmos. In Ukraine, it's so important for new generation. Not, not just for new generation in Ukraine, for new generation, generation around the world. And... Uh, to create the project, which ones have to present the freedom, how I have to start this project in the Ukraine uh, without the children. Only children have to start this project, because this project for them, this is for new generation, for them, you know, this is their project. I'm just creator, but this, they are the artists, not me, you know. One of the team's members is Tanya, like the majority of the children at this boarding school, she's hard of hearing. We ask her how it feels to be among the first to take part in this cosmic piece of art. I painted the earth, heart, and draw thus to peace has always been in earth. This message said David Etuna for especially children. They have it in year 2025. I want very much the children in Ukraine, and most importantly the children in this school, to be happy, 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 that they lived in a country without war. This capsule should open in 2025, so happen that today children paint again, but not for a school museum, they draw for space. Global and innovative art project Free Space, designed by artist David Detuno, with the support of experts from NASA. In 2017, the art satellite, capable of strong terabytes of data, will be launched on the most distant orbit on the planet Earth, while maintain contains contact with our planet. Thanks to the satellite, everyone will be able to send into the space their creative ideas, drawings, music, photos in digital format and save them in this time capsule for future generation for thousands of years. The main idea of the project, free space, enable a person to touch the space, turning it into one large canvas. Only creativity and art can bring people together while maintaining their full independence. It's the freedom to express themselves free for the system, which is why among the first countries to land the global art project and related idea, the author chose Ukraine. Alone, Dave Detuna's fantastic background in artwork Bringing that all together and going into space is the crowning aspect of our careers. And this is why we built Art Project, because only art can make people feel free. David Detuna, Georgian-born American artist living in New York. David Detuna became the first artist in the world to utilize wearable technology in a contemporary work for art on a mountain scale with Portrait of America from the first installation in his viewpoint of Bill and Sirius. His current projects include Portrait Free Space, with plans to launch a satellite in orbit to communicate with his art. Ukrainian children also take part in this great project. Great exhibition of Ukrainian artist Marina Primachenko took place in Art Arsenal in Kyiv. She is one of the most famous Ukrainian painters of 20th century. Our journalist visited the event and saw her works. 300 paintings from different periods, new vision of her life and work. In Art Hall Mosteski Arsenal opened an exhibition of famous Ukrainian artist Maria Primachenko. It is the biggest number of exhibited works from 100 years. The exhibition presented paintings that had previously been stored in founds of National Museum of Arts and Crafts. 20 years has gone since we lost Maria Primachenko. Maybe many of the supporters of her art still have not seen her earliest works in the scale and number, where she is so truthful and natural and naive without naivety. Life of Maria Primachenko is a story full of struggle between war, repressions, diseases and Chernobyl. But in all these conditions, her wonder world full of bright colors and deep symbols. Her unique naive pictures among the 10 best naive artists in the world. Organizers said that in modern Ukraine, very important to reveal Maria Primachenko not like a part of Soviet Union image of old and unhappy woman, but like self-sufficient and actual artist. Besides paintings, Alexander Dyrdovsky created video installation about her life and work. Brent 
daughter of Maria Primachenko, Anastasia, also came to the exhibition. She said that all her life she feels special energy of her famous grand-grandmother. In the future, I'm going to tell about my great-grandma to other people, because nowadays she's a little bit forgotten. Now, in our situation, when we have war, she would have given good for people. Maybe flowers or birds with wings, like a symbol of freedom. Symbolism of Primatenko is still not fully disclosed. Its delicate irony about Soviet power and fantastic world where animals are stronger than men remains a big mystery of Ukrainian culture. Picasso said that he admires her talent, her paintings kept in private collection all over the world. But simple and deep Maria said before her death, I found myself there, where live my animals and my flowers are blooming. St. Valentine's Day falls on February 14th and is the traditional day on which lovers of certain cultures let each other know about their love commonly by sending Valentine's cards, which are often anonymous. The history of Valentine's Day can be traced back to an obscure Catholic church feast day said to be in honor of St. Valentine. The day is associated with romantic love right after high Middle Ages, during which the concept of romantic love was formulated. However, it is winter, all of us do not, do not have enough internal heat and care. Arsenal of love seeks to remind of the need of, to exercise more often the brightest feelings. The project Arsenal of Love, dedicated to the most romantic holiday of the year, St. Valentine's Day, event organizes Arch not to just to prepare for the holiday, spending time with his beloved half in atmosphere of comfort, but also pay attention to the important issue of society, charity, mutual aid, civilized approach to relations and protection of the life and health. In the safe zone of love charity workshop where visitors can buy t-shirts with Prince Fashion Aid on safe sex and love cards, adults, pets and welcoming gifts for loved ones on Valentine's Day. All donations collected in the store will be used to help HIV-positive children. Right now we are on a safe love zone uh, where everybody can actually come and enjoy education programs. We have lectures about safe sex, we have a psychologist, we have lectures about sex and art, sex and photography, sex and uh, health. The official opening ceremony of the Arsenal of Love social brand Fashion Aid will present a special fashion show t-shirts with prints on safe sex. This tea art collection created modern Ukrainian artist nominees for Pinchuk Art Center 2015. Photos created for the fashion show by designer John Greensfield. You are working every day, you are thinking about your everyday problems here, yeah? and sometimes you have even not time to think about something much more important here. Yeah? But it's also living in the same time, in the same city with you. I think that. This problem that are living with you is aid. Anyone who cares about their health can contribute to workshops on the theory and practice of using condoms and hear trendy overview healthy lifestyle. All the lovers will be able to witness their love and enter into virtual marriage, safe sex and healthy lifestyle. In addition, all guests will receive free condoms. In the safe zone of love, will work attempt free rapid HIV testing, concealing on HIV AIDS. I decided it was best not to guess and check because its infection can get in different ways. Therefore, it's important to get tested and to know about the status of their recent findings. Mustetsky Arsenal should have become an important cultural brand of the country, a lighthouse on the touristic world map at the Metropolitan in New York, the Louvre in Paris of the Prado in Madrid. Arsenal's legendary past tightly connected to outstanding historical figures unfolds itself today a military building transforms into a center of high art which has all chances of becoming an internal part of the European cultural landscape. It was the weekly newscast by First Ukraine. See you next week. Victoria Zabian was working for you in the studio. Goodbye.